Um, can I just ask how many people are developers? Okay. Uh, the rest of you, you can fall asleep in the last part because there'll be code there. Um, for the developers, you can wait until the last part, then you can wake up. Um, <coughs> my name is Michael. Uh, I lead the development team at uh, LHUB. Uh, I've been at LHUB since 2016. Uh, joined there from um, the Metrologue Institute, where I worked on the now deceased Yododano backend. It was uh, put into the grave 1st of February, so I'm, I went to actually to a little uh, get together with the other guys. Uh, it's been there for like 15 years. We started in 2007, so it's had a good run. Uh, now they have a new backend, which I have no idea how they built, but it's probably fun. Uh, I'm a big proponent of uh, open data and open source, um, and that's something we need to start doing more of in LHUB. I was supposed to take the talk with uh, Sege, my colleague from uh, in the CRCD, uh, work, but unfortunately he wasn't able to come here today. So, uh, but he works. Uh, he's, he's a consultant from Cisco who has been working with us almost since uh, 2017, I think. The two of us are what we call the DevXP group in uh, LHUB, uh, which means we basically work with the developer experience uh, of developing in LHUB. Um, we are very focused on building tools, the, build, the processes, the team culture um, of the development team. Uh, because, you know, happier developers means you get better software. At least that's what our theory is. Um, and CICD is a very important part of this. Um, so what is CICD? Uh, I mean, you, if you go around, you'll find a lot of different uh, answers to that question. But I will define it in, I mean, three things. Uh, continuous integration, which is the ma practice of you know, merging your changes into the master and building them multiple times a day. Uh, continuous delivery is then, you know, if, when you do this building, you actually prepare a package so that you can actually deploy this stuff. Uh, and continuous deployment is when you actually go ahead and deploy it right after you've merged it. Um, most people end up on the first uh, level there. Uh, I've seen some people manage uh, to continuous delivery, and every once in a while you find someone who actually does continuous deployment. But it's very rare, because what it basically means is that the moment I've done a commit, this goes into production, right? I've had one project where we did that. We went from commit to deployment in 15 minutes, and that was it. And we trusted, I mean, and that's because we trusted the system, right? But to get to that point, you really have to trust your system. You have to trust your tests. So why do you want to do this, right? Uh, you want to do it because you want to make the releases that you're working on painless and risk-free events, right? You want to reduce the time to market. You want to be able to deliver software very quickly and very stable because if you can go from a commit to a deployment in 15 minutes, that is a sign that you really, really trust your developers and your system, right? Um, but above all, uh, you want fast feedback as a developer. That is the key thing in CI CD, in my opinion at least. Others might have different opinions. Um, because if you, if you look at the typical developers today without CI CD, right? You, know, you think about a problem, you make a code change, you run some unit tests maybe, hopefully at least. You submit a pull request and get, some, you know, get it approved, merge the change into the code. You wait for it to build in your CI CD system, or wait for it to build. Um, then you deploy the artifacts, uh, hopefully automatically, but usually not, uh, at least if you don't have a CI CD system. Um, and then you wait for someone to test it. Because you know, there's someone, UAT, user acceptance test or integration testers, or somebody who has to you know, look through it and say, yes, this is ready for production. Uh, and then you go and you get a coffee or something. Except that's what not usually happens, right? Because usually this process takes days, if not weeks, if not months. So what happens is you go and think about a new problem, make a new code change, and you repeat, right? And you submit changes into the system. And this, is this, this was the standard you know, workflow at LHUB uh, for during the entire project, basically. 
you just wait for feedback from code changes. You, you make a code change, then you wait for someone to come and test it and tell you that it's okay, it's ready to go into production. Um, how many of you <laughs> recall what you did you know, in detail one week ago? You do? <laughs> I, should ask, I should challenge you on that. <laughs> um, you, most people don't. Developers don't. I mean, if developers can remember what they coded last, I mean, yesterday, then they have pretty, have pretty good memory. Um, slow feedback, you know, just means that you're constantly switching context, right? Because you're, you've worked on something, you're working on the next thing, you're working on the next thing, then you have to remember, all right, what was it? There's a bug in this code I wrote three weeks ago. What the hell was I doing there? Uh, it means you have very much, very expensive development, you have poor quality of development because you're constantly context switching, and you get annoyed developers because nobody likes to be reminded about something they did wrong you know, a month ago. So what you're trying to get with fast feedback is, right, is, I mean, the opposite of this. Faster development, better quality deliveries, happier developers, and happier customers, because usually they get you know, higher quality, which means they're happy. Um, and this, this was the problem we had at Enterprise, right? but we actually had a CI CD server. So, I mean, you should say, you know, we have CI CD, why don't we, I mean, what is the problem? The thing is that CI CD is not about the tools. <laughs> you can have Bamboo, you can have, you know, Team CD, you can have Jenkins, you can have whatever, you can set it up, but that doesn't mean you're doing CI CD. Because this is all about culture and architecture, right? If your, if your CI CD server is constantly red, you're definitely not doing CI CD. Um, and just to give an example, like basically the deployment of Dolly at Help uh, for, for many years, right? Is your, you, know, you have a deployment scope describing this is how you deploy Help. Uh, you do a manual deployment, uh, at least that was how it started. Eventually it became sort of semi automated that you know, press this button, run this script, start up this little uh, uh, thing where you log in and then you enter password and so on and so forth. Uh, and then, you know, if this is production environment, you know, remember, don't run this. If it's not production, you have to remember to run this. If it's a cloud environment, you have to, you know, run this stuff. If it's physical, then don't run this. Um, you end up with, you know, lots of build jobs, which are all, you know, different uh, states. Uh, some of them out of date, some of them not. And it's extremely painful. Um, so, needless to say, this is extremely error-prone. <laughs> you get lots of problems. People forget to put a you know, space into the password and then everything breaks. Uh, that happens multiple times. You have builds and deploys which are non-repeatable. You have you know, two environments which are deployed, which are supposed to be the same, which are definitely not the same. Uh, you, have, you, know, you have environments where you don't really know what the state is because uh, it was deployed in manually, and this one was deployed manually, and maybe someone forgot, forgot to add this version of, uh, of, of the, the tools. And making changes to this stuff is extremely hard. Um, and you know, it's only available to the initiators few, the, the, the gurus of the infrastructure. Uh, so, so, but it works, right? And that's the, th that's the thing, you know, you actually get things deployed. It's just very, very, very painful and very resource intensive. And, you know, you can, we, we spent actually, when we, when we took over LHUB from, uh, from our vendor, we spent a lot of time fixing this. Uh, quite a lot of time was spent on making it faster, among other things, uh, writing a lot of scripts. But eventually you run out of Band-Aid, right? You cannot continue patching something which is fundamentally a broken approach. Uh, so basically, at some point, we just decided we have to cut. We have to start anew uh, and start over. And this is hard, right? Because adopting new technologies is always something which has some pushback. You have all the developers say, yes, let's go ahead. And then you have other people saying, yeah, but it actually works. Let's not fix what is only halfway broken. Um, you have to deal with collaboration between teams because different teams have different viewpoints. Uh, you have to get everyone on board who is working with this uh, area, which is kind of hard, or can be hard at least. Um, and you have to maintain the, I mean, 
the world doesn't stop because we decided that, yes, we want to build an entirely new build pipeline, right? We still have to maintain what we have today. Uh, and then the big question is, you know, where do you start even? So you want to start from scratch, but, you know, it's a huge and fairly complicated uh, area that we need to deal with because, I mean, this is what we're looking at, right? This is the existing process for deploying LHOP or the process as it was at least. Uh, this is not a trivial thing. And then you have like, I think, a hundred conference pages just detailing these different steps here. Um, the answer for us, at least, was to start from uh, buzzword alert, DevOps, <laughs> um, combining you know, uh, software pr development practices with IT operations uh, work. And this is... Um, Basically, that when we started looking at, you know, we want to deploy it. Uh, we integrate, you know, uh, build, test, and deployment into the source code. We do not want this located in uh, Bamboo or TMC or Jenkins in some uh, database that is uh, collected to that. It should be with the source code. All, this, all the code that deploys LHUMP is with the source code that it deploys. Um, and we approach building pipelines like any other software. I mean, to, to us, there's no difference. It is just software, everything. Um, which means that, you know, we start by figuring out the requirements. We describe an architecture for this. We choose some technology uh, that, we, that, we, that seems cool. <laughs> and then we implement and iterate over it, right? And we do code reviews and everything else that we uh, test it and so on. Um, so step one for us was, you know, basically establish what was our principles, right? Which is, you know, what are our core architecture, architecture principles, what are the requirements that we have? Uh, we spent a lot of uh, discussions with the platform team and the AO team, uh, discussing different principles, um, and settled on a couple of uh, things which we felt were important for us, uh, such as, you know, that all pipelines should use the same uh, procedures and scripts. You should have different scripts for production and different scripts for, uh, for test environments. Um, we needed to have the version control. Uh, there should be no dependency between deployable elements, uh, or at least as, as, not, as, as few as possible. Uh, deploy should be idempotent, which means that you, know, you deploy something, uh, you deploy X and you deploy X again, you should just have the state of X, right? Um, an artifact should only be released once. You shouldn't have multiple releases of the same uh, artifacts. Uh, we drew up some designs, uh, looked at the, uh, the pipelines, decide how we want to, to build them, um, and also sort of thought, you know, how do we change the architecture of the LLOP system to facilitate this? Because one thing is that you want to, you know, you, have a pipe, you want to build some pipelines and you have this you know, big architecture you want to put into your CICD system. But if you can make changes to your system so that it becomes easier to deploy, then why are you not doing that, right? So we did that. Um, and then we wanted to figure out the tooling, which is where we come back to Ansible, which Christopher talked a little bit about. Uh, because we basically uh, started looking at, you know, what is the best way of deploying this? Uh, and we, we have, our current system, or the, the old system, is basically running in Bamboo. Today we're using TeamCity, which I'll come back to. Um, but one of the key things we wanted right, for deployments was it should be idempotent, which means, um, and, and which is where Ansible is one of those tools which really shine. Um, so one of the first things we did was decide that all of our deployments run through Ansible in practice. Once we're deploying source code, when, once we get to that point, we deploy through Ansible. Ansible is a very, uh, Christopher mentioned a little bit, it's a very powerful automation engine, uh, useful for configuration management, provisioning, deployment, so on and so forth. Um, and it allows you to code what your deployment is going to be doing. Um, but above all, it supports very strongly this idea of idempotence, which is, as, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the things we established early on as being very, very important for us. Uh, TeamCity is the integration so, or build CISO we used. Um, and this was kind of, uh, there are many 
all, all of these tools basically do the same thing, Bamboo, Jenkins, so on. Uh, Teamsy was one we had in-house. Uh, it has a really nice uh, system for, for pipelines as code. Uh, and it uses Kotlin, which uh, our development team loves to, have, to use. We have been using Kotlin for four or five years now, uh, and uh, we haven't seen any reason to stop. Uh, so it was very natural for us just to continue uh, with this. Uh, but everything I'm just going to discuss here, you can probably do it in most other tools uh, as well. Then there's uh, our pipelines, and this is where we'll start digging a little bit into the code. Uh, today, what we have is uh, 107 active projects in uh, Team City, uh, which have 772 build jobs. Um, this build, all of these projects are spread over different development squads. Uh, they have projects with different levels of maturity. And, and this is where we started seeing, you know, how do we handle this, right? How do you ensure that, you know, you have 772 and this, uh, by, the by the time we finish with this, we're probably up to a thousand or so. Uh, how do you ensure that all of these build jobs stay maintained, stay usable, and don't degrade uh, constantly, right? Uh, because that's the problem. Once you start writing, you know, these build jobs, then five years later someone needs to change it and then it probably doesn't work. Um, and these build jobs are not completely trivial code, so this is a very simple one. This is a unit test config. Um, let's see. It's, uh, I warned you, code. It, it has a section where you basically just define so the build type is basically the build job, right? It has a section where you define the, the you know, describe what the build job is. Uh, you note where it's, uh, that it fetches this from the VCS, basically, and then it has a bunch of steps. Uh, in this case, it's, it has a Maven step, which runs, you know, Maven minus U, clean test, and then it has a step where it reports. So th this is a very simple uh, pipeline as code. Um, the thing is, the, or the, the nice thing that Team City provides, uh, and I believe Jenkins also has this at least, um, is that this is just, this is Kotlin code basically. This is a Kotlin code program like any other Kotlin pro code program. You can extract that into a library. Um, and then you can just de declare that library as a dependency and then import uh, the library into this uh, pipeline. So from that stuff we idea, we go into just this line of code here. You define a class, unit test, and you call that class. And there you have your build pipeline, right? And this we can take across every single project. Instead of having every project has, having its own unit test uh, steps, we just define a generic step and reuse it everywhere. We can also, um, or what we also did, was parameterize these, uh, these classes. So basically, we, you have a unit test step for, for Maven. You can have one for Gradle. You can have one for um, Ansible, if you want to, 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 to run unit tests on Ansible, and so on and so forth, right? So, so because, again, this is just code. It's code like any other code you might program. Uh, and what we have, uh, in, in L of today is what we call the common build configuration. It's basically just a library which contains all the classes, uh, all the templates, all the examples for the development of the build pipelines at LHOP. Uh, it's, it's just a simple Kotlin library. Uh, we build it in TeamCity using itself, actually. Um, and it just, and, and, and we, and, and this is where we hide, to say it, to put it that way, the complexity of the pipelines. Um, so, the unit test uh, example I just gave before, this is a simplified version of the unit test uh, class in, um, in the common build config. Uh, it takes this input uh, configuration and uh, build config build type, um, def defines the, the IDs. Oh, wait, I think I actually have. Uh, yeah, it defines the IDs the same way as I, I did in the, the pipeline earlier. 
uh, does some uh, checks depending on you know what type of uh, uh, config am I running? Do I want to run a unit test on the Gradle uh, project or a Maven project? And then that's basically it. And then we have you know about eight, nine. Uh, sorry, I haven't counted this beforehand. Nine <laughs> basic classes uh, which support the different types of build jobs that we have in our pipelines. Right? Assemble is the build one, which just builds the project. Uh, Auto release ensures that you know. Uh, you, you start that one, it releases your, your product to the to, to our Artifactory instance. Uh, code review runs the code review workflow, deployment deploys, and so on and so forth. Um, and all of our projects basically use these nine different uh, build jobs, or are variations on them. What is also really nice, uh, and I don't actually think I have a, a slide on that, is that uh, because this is Java code, uh, and because you can, uh, I haven't. It's not included here, but you can actually you can actually introduce uh, through the the build config parameter. You can actually introduce custom code into this class. So if you do need to, you can actually customize the unit test class when you run it. Um, so let me just yeah, and. Basically, what this is yours is that we are not repeating ourselves, right? Uh, you have in L, I mean, in in a project of this size, right? You are doing a Maven build uh, in your pipelines at least a hundred times. There's no reason why that code that you write for the Maven build has to be repeated one hundred times, right? Just, I mean, one Maven build is is no different from another. You don't do builds in in ten different ways. At least I hope you don't. Uh, so, so basically, what it ensures is that we are not we are not, we're reusing the same code, right, to to do other stuff. We ensure there's consistency in the way that we are building uh, our pipe. I mean, building our code in, in different pipelines. Um, and also, we ensure that you know when people find a bug in one side <laughs> in, in in their pipeline, right, and fix it, it also gets fixed everywhere else. Uh, because what you otherwise see is that you know someone starts. Set, creates a pipeline, then someone copies that pipeline and finds a bug, and then they fix it in their place, and then it's just fixed in one place and not the other. Uh, because this is a library which is shared by everyone, it's always all the, all the improvements, all the changes get propagated across the entire system. Um, and then you can also little things. Uh, one problem that we we are, we are seeing now, for example, is that suddenly we have, you know, we start out with a few, uh, five uh, test systems. Suddenly we're now talking about 15 different uh, environments that we need to deploy to. Um, and you can do that in ma many different ways, right, uh, in, in, in code like this. I mean, you can create a parameter that you pass into your build job, and then the, then the build job looks at the parameter and decides test 7 or test 10 or whatever, and then does whatever it, it needs to do, which is pretty configurable. And I think I missed, uh, missed the LT there. Uh, the problem with that is that it's quite difficult to understand what is, uh, what is going on when you're looking into your, your build, con build server. Uh, and you end up with a lot of different uh, nasty problems, uh, at least that's what we found when we tried this, uh, such as race conditions and reruns of dependent builds because uh, the, the server doesn't is not able to distinguish between whether this is you know what environment this is, um, and it's also a lot more hard to to, con to configure correctly uh, because you do have to make some some differences. Uh, the other solution was you know uh, to create a standalone build job deploy job for each of the environments, which is a lot more predictable. Uh, you don't need to add a lot of extra parameters to each uh, each of them. It's a lot easier to set up. Um, but of course, you end up, you know, with 15 build jobs which look exactly the same, um, which tends to be a problem because, again, you start having uh, different build jobs uh, with one errors in one not being fixed in others and so on. Uh, but this is code, and code has loops, so you can actually just. Say that you know define um, 
a class and then build it 15 times, if that's what you want to do. Um, so this is, this is the power that you get when you're using uh, uh, build, uh, doing build configurations as code. So we hit, what basically is happening is we have a, we have a list right, uh, of environments, and we just uh, run the, create a build job for each of these environments that we have to find in the list. You can also, of course, use conditionals. So for example, if you have some environments which need a little bit of extra, uh, extra care or need some special uh, treatment, then you can uh, you know, add a when statement or an if statement and treat them, handle it that way, right? Basically, I mean, everything that you can do with normal code, which you know, we usually can do because we're the developers, you can do in the build configuration. Um, and one of the one of the sim, uh, I actually had a nice uh, video that I had prepared, but after seeing all of the the problems, I decided let me not try to run that uh, to show sort of what is how long time does it take if you want to create a new uh, deploy job in, um, in 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 the in the existing environment, uh, and I just say it, it takes two plus minutes, and that is if you know exactly everything you need to do and do it as fast as you possibly can, right? If you don't know what, you, what you're supposed to be doing, then forget about it. It takes hours. <laughs> but if you know exactly what you're doing, it takes you two and a half minutes or two plus minutes. Uh, in, in our current setup, you add one line of code. And that's it. Then you have a new environment. Or a new environment deployed job, right? So, um, that was uh, basically what I was going to talk about with respect to, to the code. I mean, there's lots more you can do uh, because, I mean, I mean, you can basically build a REST API inside this build jobs if you want to because this is just code. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, doesn't mean you should do it all the time, right? Uh, with great power comes a lot of great responsibility. Uh, and as Ton also mentioned a little bit with regexes, right? You know, just because you can use regexes doesn't mean you should use it. You always have to think about, you know, what is the what is the right is this the right tool for the job? Um, what we have today, uh, after well over a year of work on this, actually, uh, is that now we are able to reuse our CI/CD configurations uh, pretty much universally across all of our tools. So there's pretty much nothing that is custom built here. Uh, when we build pipelines, we always reuse existing. Uh, patterns or templates that we've built. Uh, we have fully automated deploys to the development and integration environments, which means that if the, when, when the developer uh, submits a pull request, it gets deployed to the development environment right away. Uh, once, they have a, once the pull request has been reviewed, it goes into the integration test environment fully automatically. Uh, and we can deploy LHOP actually with a single click, um, which is not because of the, the common build config stuff. It's Ansible. That's the power Ansible gives us. Uh, and we've managed, uh, with a lot of help from the AO team, uh, to get deployment time down from the 12 to 15 hours it was when we started out to about two to three hours now. Uh, and with no manual stops except for one component, which we are working on because it's 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 really annoying, <laughs> um, and also we we as we worked on this right, we added a lot of uh, small features into the to the pipelines, um, which again we deployed universally across all components because we are just reusing the code right, uh, so that you can actually get the state of, uh, I mean we log what versions of the components are deployed. We ensure that this, uh, this information is, is uh, readily available in a database. Um, and once we've deployed on one environment, we are 99% sure that it's also going to deploy on the rest of the 15 environments, right? Because it's the same code doing the deployment. It's not you know, five different, uh, or it's, it's not people doing five different things when they're doing manual deploys. 
it's exactly the same code. What we haven't done yet is, well, the last component we need to go, or the last couple of components still need to be automated. Uh, we're working on that as we speak, I guess. Um, unless Michael is, is, uh, is watching this talk. Um, we have, uh, as I said, we have gotten the environment status into the, uh, into the environment so that you can actually query and get it out. But we also like to, to you know, maybe build some more functionality on top of that so you can actually get this out through an API in a very nice way. Um, because all of this was manual in the past, uh, there's very little in the sense of, of good integration testing in LHOP today. And uh, that's one of the things that we have a real high focus on that, on getting because if you don't have good, I mean, if you don't have good integration tests after you have deployed, then you don't have confidence that what you have deployed is actually working right. So that's one of the things we, we, we still have ahead of us. Uh, and then, I mean, deployments are two to three hours a day. Uh, I still think that's way too much. I don't see any reason why this should be more than an hour of time to deploy. Deployments don't need to take time because if you do them properly, and if you and if you know, if you if you build your architecture to facilitate it, uh, so this is one of the things we 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 also have as an ambition uh, to work on. And then in general, we I mean, pipelines as code is still fairly new uh, to help. It's something we need to build competence in with all the developers because, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you have code the code to deploy it should be with that code, right? So if you have responsibility for a piece of code, you should also know how to deploy it. That's kind of our mantra and, and the way that we want to work uh, with this uh, sort of thing. So building pipelines of code is something we expect all developers to be able to do. So that was uh, what I planned to say. Um, thank you. <laughs>